Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right. Thank you, Alice. Okay, bye-bye. So I heard that Bob has been giving you a hard time uh, with creating a contract. Like you're missing an authorization from him. Huh. We'll get it taken care of. In this video, we're going to cover parties in demo and their authority and role in your contract. Don't go anywhere. We'll see how we can take care of the Bob situation. Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. It's very common to run into the missing authorization from Bob error. Now, to understand these sort of errors, we need to understand the roles of parties in DAML, specifically the signatory, the controller, the observers. Let's dive right in. For parties, we are really dealing with authorization and privacy. Authorization is who can do what, and privacy is who can see what. Now, the first type of party that we want to talk about is the signatory. This is a party type, obviously. It's required, and there can be more than one. And if there's more than one, the party listed are in an end relationship, which means both have to agree, and they authorize the creation and archival of contracts. Observers are simple. They are party type as well, but they are optional, and they can see the contract or the transactions. Controller is an important party. It's required. There can be more than one for sure, and their job is to exercise choices. Now, we are familiar with the use of parties like Alice and Bob, if you have used a, one of our templates. Uh, when you do, you're either dealing with the navigator or the script. For the navigator, the parties are set in the demo.yaml file. For the script, it's set inside the script code at the bottom, if you use one of our templates like this one, the skeleton template, which we're going to take a closer look at. The skeleton template has a story in which uh, Alice is the issuer and the owner, and she is going to create contract number zero, if you will, out of this template and gives herself the ownership of her own TV. Then she's going to exercise a choice called give and gives the TV to a new owner named Bob. Now the TV is in Bob's custody and Bob will exercise that same choice give and gives it back to Alice. Now notice that I've colored the two arrows green and two blues. Behind the scenes they are both create commands but they are executed in different contexts. Notice that the green ones require all the arguments required to create a contract while the blue ones really just require the data that is to be mutated along uh, the chain uh, from one contract to another. Let's dive deeper into the code to see where the missing authorization from Bob errors can occur. So we have our terminal up and I'm going to create a new demo project uh, using the template of uh, skeleton. Now that will give us a, um, a demo file to work with and the script is pre-written for us so it's a good uh, starting point. So let's cd into demo at bop, bop problem. I guess that's a good name. And fire up demo studio. VS code fires up. Let's maximize this. And let's look at the main.demo that is already pre written for us in this template. Okay, let's take a look at this. We've got the data model. Oops, let me go back, back here. Uh, we got a data model that's fantastic. And we have a signatory which is the issuer, and a controller, which is the owner, which means this person can do the following things. It can give uh, the item to a new owner. Um, you will see that in the test script at the bottom here, we are creating two parties, and the first action that's going to happen is it starts at line 28, and then line 34, and then 37. Now, uh, what's happening is what we described. Alice gives herself... The TV gives it to Bob, Bob gives it back to her. If we see, uh, we've, we check on the archive, we see that everything's clean. And we have TX0, TX1, and then TX2. Now this is TX0 right here, and that maps to this very first action here, which is Alice kicks off this chain of custody of the TV, if you will. 
Uh, the second part here is ma maps to TX1. This is when Alice gives the TV to Bob. And the final one is TX2, where Bob gives the TV back to Alice. Fantastic. Notice that we are using all the create arguments for TX to create TX0. Um, and then subsequent ones are just the new owner. Now, if I have to change that to Bob, you see there's a problem. This is the first instance of when Bob is not authorizing a, a, a contract or uh, to, to help us proceed here. What's going on here? So we see that um, we have a, a committed transaction, which means that that got, got logged into the ledger that went in. So that is actually good. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it got committed. But the, after that, we do have a partial transaction. So TX1 never occurred. So it broke right there. So we know that it failed here. So let's take a closer look at why it may have failed. So let's verify that we have um, the owner here is Bob. And then look at this. Alice is trying to do something. But by then, the TV is already Bob's. So Alice cannot do anything. And that's why Bob's authorization was required. Now we change that to Bob in line 36 and have Bob submit it. Have Bob take the action. Things will be okay. Now in this case, Bob is giving himself the TV. And if I were to change this to Alice and pass the baton to, to Alice, pass the ownership to Alice, we're going to see the same problem. Right now, we need an authorization from Alice. Why? Because in line 39 uh, or 40, um, Alice is the only person authorized to act on it because now she has custody of the TV. So switch that to Alice, give it back to Bob, and everybody will be happy. I really don't understand why they're giving TVs back and forth. But okay, let's move on to another scenario where Bob's authorization could be missing. And that is when he is designated as a signatory. Right now, we only have issuer. If I would add owner, which will be whoever the new owner is, uh, you see it breaks, right? Again, missing authorization from Bob. Now, if we look at the script output, you will see that zero transaction was committed. So it, it starts off with partial, which means nothing passed. Everything failed right at the get-go. So that tells us that the problem exists at the very, very first uh, uh, command that we are trying to run in the script. So in this case, you would use the initiate and accept um, um, design pattern to, to fix this so that we can have an authorization from the owner, uh, or we can um, probably just use just one signatory uh, in this example. So I hope this video gave you a good idea of why we run into certain authorization errors. For Bob's case, maybe he has no business authorizing the contract in the first place. Or he should be part of the signatories authorizing it and he's not. And there's the last possibility that he is acting on a contract that has already been archived. We've got more content. See you next episode. And if Bob gives you more problems, let me know. I'm going to call Alice and let her know that everything is taken care of. Yeah. What do you mean Bob's missing? I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I talked to him. You can find him?